The topic for today is, are you drinking too much? So this is a subject that um, I think I've got a lot of experience with because I was actually drinking quite a lot way back when. So uh, just to give you a really quick background, uh, my father's a recovering alcoholic, so he gave up drinking 40 years ago uh, this year, which is pretty exciting for him and a massive inspiration for me as well. And uh, I was eight years old when he gave up drinking and he wasn't a bad drunk, he wasn't abusive drunk, nothing like that. If anything, he was a good time type of drunk, would spoil us kids, buy us toys with money he didn't have or, or stuff like that. But honestly, I really don't remember too much about that. I remember his little VB cans or bottles that he used to have as a kid and his cigarettes because he always smoked, but that's, that's pretty much about the extent of it. I remember when my mother pulled us aside and spoke to us about where dad was and because he had gone into rehab at the time and uh, she had told us that he'd gone overseas on a holiday and then one day we were in the car and she said I've just got to go visit someone left us in the car like you used to back then and we we're all mucking around in the car and then we looked over and it's like that's weird, that's dad. And he was in a robe waving to us from over the fence. Um, and then mum had to pretty much come clean with, with what was happening. I don't think we really understood at the time, but um, I remember mum sitting me down saying, you know, dad drank too much and, and he's gonna stop drinking sort of thing. And from the moment he came back, uh, he did and he was sober. So we grew up in a household that was very aware of, of drinking and just in, I, I don't know about my siblings, but me personally, I was very aware of it. So when I hit about 17, I think I was in year 12 at that time, I was drinking a lot. So not all the time. So I think a lot of people think alcoholics are people who just um, get up in the morning and drink. They drink at anything, anytime. And, and absolutely that that, that, that's definitely some people and I'm pretty sure that was probably my dad but for me personally I'm a binger so I can go weeks without drinking but when I drink I make up for that and I don't drink for the taste of it I don't think oh wow that wine tastes nice maybe I haven't had nice enough wine but I I used to drink for the feel of how drinking made me you know it would calm me down or so I thought um make me not as stressed, um, chill out, and basically have an awesome time if I was with my girlfriends or something like that. So um, I found the more children I had, the more I drank. <laughs> so I'd always wait till like five o'clock and then I'd crack open a cruiser or a wine or, and then I found Interestingly, when I was like, a, I'll go back, sorry. So when I was around the 17 years old, I was very aware of my drinking. And every Thursday and Saturday night, we're going out, getting hammered pretty much, have a spew, come home. But I was still functional, went to work, did all that. Um, and then I decided that probably drinking was, wasn't really for me. So I don't know. I didn't, I, I, I stopped doing that. I'd still have a few drinks and stuff like that, but wouldn't get plastered. And that went on probably for the next 10 years. Um, when I got divorced, um, I would drink a little bit, have some great times with my girlfriends. Uh, when I got remarried, um, I had two boys of my own. Um, I remarried my gorgeous husband who had a one-year-old daughter at the time. And uh, we got married um, and then we had a younger son who is now about to, or turning 17 this year. So I found with four kids under six or whatever it was at the time, I really needed to drink. I felt that I needed time out. I worked as well. I had kids in daycare. I also had my baby at home during that time. And, you know, like we do, we need a break. And uh, for me, drinking alcohol was it. I mean, my kids even remember, I'd send them to the fridge to get me a beer or get me a wine or get me a cruiser. So, and they still remember that interestingly enough. And I gave up drinking 12 years ago this year. So uh, the eldest was 12 when I gave up drinking um, and my youngest was four. So he doesn't really remember me drinking too much. But um, I was a laugh when I drank and it was really interesting when I stopped drinking because the comments that were made 
from who I thought were very close friends, things like, you're no fun now, you don't drink, or I was like, oh, really? Because I actually thought I was pretty funny. But I think for them, it made them feel good watching me be a dick when I was drinking because they felt superior. I think that's pretty much what it was. So what led me to actually give up drinking? That, that was a really interesting thing because there are a couple of different things that happened uh, where I knew my drinking was probably out of control. And, and some of you might be able to relate to this. So, you know, I was just, I was thinking about it earlier and there were little things like, um, never wanted to tell people I drank a whole bottle of wine at night. So I'd always leave a little tiny bit in the, in the bottom. So therefore I wasn't lying. A couple of big glasses, but not the whole bottle. It was pretty much the whole bottle. Um, and I would do things like refill my wine while no one was looking so they'd think it was still the same glass of wine. Or I'd scull a cruiser and then quickly get another one before people realised that it wasn't the same one. Um, didn't think it was really intentional, but uh, looking back, it was like, oh, wow, that was pretty sneaky. Um, also, like recycling bin, you'd always hear the clangor of the glass bottles and uh, that's always a giveaway sign. And I remember at the time um, there was, oh, what was that show called? Desperate Housewives. And the redhead lady was, they were concerned about her drinking problem because she was drinking a lot at night. It was sort of around that time. In addition to that, funnily enough, 60 Minutes had an article or had an um, episode that was coming up and it was about housewives drinking too much or mums drinking too much. And my husband actually said to me, he never commented on my drinking ever, but he actually said to me, oh, babe, you might want to sit down and watch this. Now, I already knew that I was probably drinking too much. And don't get me wrong, I'm always an early bird. So I'd, I'd drink and, um, I don't know, I might have a bit of a headache, just take a Panadol and, and get on. So what, it wasn't affecting anything else. But what I think I was doing was masking what I was actually feeling and not wanting to have the conversations that I needed to have, um, which made me probably drink even more. So I think at that time in my life, I wasn't really happy. Like my husband and I were under a lot of pressure. We were a blended family. Um, we had six kids. We were living where we really didn't want to live. We were living in a shitty house. Money was um, tough and... Um, yeah, so, so we were both under a lot of pressure. And I think for me, I drank so that, you know, if he annoyed me or he said something, well, I'd just brush it off because I was drinking and I was, you know, drunk pretty much and I didn't really care. Whereas, and I think also because we actually met online and because my first husband left me, I think deep down I was really masking who I was and, and my own personality because I was scared that if he knew who I really was, he might leave me as well. So there's definitely some insecurity. Now, I'm no psychologist. I've just come up with this <laughs> on my own. So I, I sort of think there was a bit of that as well. So me drinking meant there was no confrontation as far as I was concerned. A couple of other little things happened. That was sort of funny, but not really when you look back. One that stuck in my mind was uh, my husband had a work function and fuck me. I just remember the champagne and dancing on the dance floor on my own and walking outside and the cold air hitting me, hopped on a minibus because they were dropping us home, vomited in a scarf. Then the bus had to stop Why I vomited on a fence and got splinters all in my hands. And I remember waking up the next morning and I was spooning my husband, I think, at the time, and I went, I'm so sorry. And he just said something along the lines of, you never have to be sorry, babe. And they were probably the perfect words I needed to hear, but I knew I'd done the wrong thing. I'd probably said the wrong thing to someone, like I always do with my mouth, gets ahead of me. And, yeah, yeah. He was divine, actually, but for me, it was a real wake-up call. I kept drinking. We moved We moved house. We moved to a new place. My drinking probably got worse um, at that stage. Uh, it was 2007, and 
we follow the AFL in Australia here and we follow the Geelong Cats. They won the grand final. And it was so super stressful on that day because my husband is a mad, mad Geelong Cats fan. So my uh, thing was let's have some drinks to, you know, to ch this is even before the game started. And I'm making black Russians with, I don't even know what black Russians are made of now, but it was like this much vodka and this much Coke, like ridiculous. So I remember Geelong winning by a massive score, but even – when there was no way they could be beat. I'm like, can they still be beaten? Like, I was just not making any sense whatsoever. So what happened was I think I was drunk. I went into the bathroom to have a spew. Meanwhile, my husband and my two of my kids were there. They were celebrating. And my daughter, who would have been eight at the time, which is pretty ironic because that's when the age I was when my father gave up drinking, um, I remember her knocking on the bathroom door and you know when you're lying on the bathroom floor because it's nice and cold and you're like overheating because you've drunk too much. I don't know whether you guys have ever done that, um, but if you have, you can relate. I had a spew in the toilet. Um, I was feeling pretty shitty and my daughter knocked on the door and said, mum, we're celebrating. We're having McDonald's. Do you want any? And I'm like, I don't know what I said to her. Maybe no, whatever. And I heard her walk down the hallway and said, no, mum doesn't want anything. She's drunk again. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, that blew my mind. Oh, yeah, that was incredible. So um, on November 17th, 2007, I didn't decide to drink forever. Absolutely not. I, I decided it was time to get healthy. So um, I gave up drinking and just thought, you know, I'll give it up for a week, which went into two weeks, three weeks, three months, six months. And now... Um, November 17th this year, it will be 12 years. And I have not had one sip of alcohol in that time. Uh, it was super hard. I think if anything, it was hardest for my husband because he started to see the real me. And um, and not only that, but I think for him, like, you know, we don't, we don't go to pubs. We don't, I don't know. It's, it's really quite weird because I think a lot of people feel really uncomfortable with the fact that I don't drink, which I think is hilarious because after 12 years, I know how to really socialise with drunk people. And it's great because I hear all the stories and I actually remember them in, remember them in the morning, whereas they don't. Maybe that's why they don't want to invite me out anymore. But um, yeah, people's reactions are really quite hilarious. And I think it's, as I said, their insecurity because it makes them question why they are drinking. And I think, and I don't want to be like a prude because I'm getting older and I don't drink and I'm like a reform smoker. That, that's not what I want to do. But I think we really need to bring awareness to the drinking culture within Australia because I actually think it is really, really bad. And I think especially with um, young kids today, there's a lot of binging, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, going to get smashed, like going to get written off. And that, like, that's a bit sad. I even have had someone say to me on Saturday night, well, if I don't drink, there's no point in going out. And I'm like, well, don't you want to see the people that you're going out with? And it's like, yeah, but I'll have no fun, I'll be tired. So no, I'd rather stay at home and whatever. Like that blew my mind. I was really shocked by that comment because I was like, wow, if, if you're at the stage where, and that sounds really pathetic, but you know, you don't need to drink to have fun. Um, and I get it because I loved my drinking. I like, absolutely loved it. But um, I have a ball now. It's, it's taken me a lot of years to get used to it. Um, but what you realize is everyone else is pissed. So even if you say anything, they're not going to remember. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just think for our kids, and I think it's really interesting uh, watching my kids because, and my husband also pretty much doesn't drink anymore. And I think he does it so that he that he doesn't feel bad for me. But I don't know. I think it's been too long now. Like, I'll send him, babe, have a drink. Like, I'm your designated driver. I'm completely cool with him drinking. I'm completely cool with my kids drinking. Like, they're 24 and 22 and, and 19 uh, but at the same time, I make them very aware that the genetics in our family are not great and we tend to be bingers. We're all in. It's all or nothing. So uh, for me personally, I never say never. I never I'll never say that I'll never drink again. But at the same time, um, I always take myself back to 
when I, how I felt the next day. So anytime I think that I would like to drink or I feel like I'm missing out, I always think about that time when the, the morning after and I was with my husband and I felt so shitty, like I've really done the wrong thing. And I never, ever, ever want to put him in that situation or make me feel uh, that bad like I did that day. So for me, that stops me from, from reaching for a drink. And do I miss it? Mm. It's less and less as time goes on. Um, yeah, sometimes I'd like to get absolutely smashed, especially, you know, when my brother passed away. Um Sometimes when you really want to celebrate, and I have people all, this, all the time saying, um, oh, if only you drank or, you know, that'd be great. And But, you know, that's their issue, not mine. But I did have one really good friend which really, really shocked me. And she was the one that said, oh, you'll be no fun now, you don't drink. And I was like, wow. And I don't really see them anymore. I don't socialise with that group of girls anymore. Um, and I think because when I drank, I was a, fucking idiot and I would do stupid shit so if anyone dared me to do anything I would be doing it so I was funny as fuck but they would laugh at me not with me so uh, for them it made them feel I think it personally made them feel awesome like they didn't have any drinking issues I did and I think that's actually a really shitty friendship to have <laughs> so if you got friends like that you actually don't need them um I don't go out a lot now, but I've really learned to enjoy my own company, enjoy my husband's company. And I think actually me giving, giving up drinking probably saved our marriage as far as I was able to be, be who I am wholly and solely, be completely honest with my husband uh, about my insecurities and what bothered me and all that sort of stuff. So for me, it made our relationship so much deeper and like we're best friends and um, I owe my second husband everything because he is such a good man, like such a good man. And, um, and yeah, I'm sure he wishes I'd get pissed because he definitely got a lot more luckier when uh, I was drinking than when I wasn't. <laughs> so um, I'm sure he misses that part of it. But at the same time, I think our connection is so much uh, deeper and, um, he, he really understands the real me, which I think makes a big difference. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm always talking to my kids about, you know, they say alcohol. I mean, do I call myself an alcoholic? Mm, I don't know because uh, I've only been to alco Alcoholics Anonymous twice. I went with twice with a friend. Um, that was more for her though than me. Uh, I just gave up cold turkey. And I had my dad as inspiration. And as he always said to me, one day at a time. He used AA um, to get through his sobriety. And I, and maybe he's, he still does now. I'm not too sure. We don't really talk about it. But um, for me, I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't need it that. Um, I just... Yeah, I just, I just take one day at a time. So I never say never. I never say, you know, I wouldn't drink again. Maybe when I'm 60 or 70, I might crack open a bottle of shampers in the nursing home or something like that. But um, at this stage, uh, I'm happy not to drink. And um, I really think that if you're struggling um, and you want to reach out, uh, I'm here if you want to make any comments or, or anything like that on any tips that I may be able to give you. But it literally just starts with one day where you wake up and go, no. And I, and I think it's also about validating yourself and finding out what that underlying issue is that's making you drink um, to block out something. Because I completely understand it. There's people out there that drink because they love the taste of wine. And that's great. But that wasn't me. Like for me, it was like, why would you just have one glass of wine? That makes absolutely no sense. I drank for the feeling. I didn't drink for the taste. So um, my feeling was to block out, to not confront, to relax, um, to just get by because it was a really stressful time in my life. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. As I said, if you're struggling or... At, 
please reach out. Um, I'll do anything I can or comment. But I just think in today's day and age with with kids and drinking and binging, I just think it's really, really bad. And I think we need to educate our kids on that it's not normal behaviour and, um, you know, how they won't legalise pot but they legalise alcohol is beyond me because, um, you know, alcohol does a lot of damage to a lot of people and uh, I think that really needs to be looked at. And, and who decided that alcohol was okay and everything else wasn't or, you know, like vice versa, like none of that sort of makes sense. And if anything, we, um, well, you know, we in a way like we idolise alcohol. Like it's so funny when you give up something like that because then everything you see relates to alcohol. It's like when I'm eating healthy at the moment. So everything I see relates to bad food. You know, it's everything that you don't have or, or you don't, want you, you see all the time like when i got divorced every show i watched was about divorce <laughs> do you know what i mean it was that it's that sort of thing it, it just becomes more aware in your mind and, and you notice those things but um look that's just my little rant on on drinking i think it's definitely a genetic thing and uh, i think if you've got the genes to be aware is the first step uh and then having the support around you really, really helps. And if you don't have that in family or anything like that, I definitely think AA is the way to go and reach out, even if you just sit and listen because everyone has a story. And uh, I think it's really healthy to uh, be open to those sort of things and to see whether, you know, you go, you go down that route or you, you speak to someone else. But, you know, definitely don't be around people that encourage you to behave like an idiot because... They're not doing you any favours and it's just to make themselves feel better. Once again, it was like my first podcast actually about eating shit. It's like watching maths. Everyone watches it because it's a car crash and people like to feel good about themselves. So watching someone else be shit at something makes them feel really good. Like I'll sit on the lounge with my husband and we're watching Married at First Sight going, oh my God, how awesome are we? Like I just said to my husband, Aren't you lucky you got me? Otherwise, you'd have one of these nutters. So, and I think it's the same with drinking. It makes people feel uncomfortable and it makes them question their sobriety and why they're drinking. And, um, you know, that's on them. I personally don't have an issue. Um, I have girlfriends that will say to me, we'll be out and we'll go dancing. And they go, I don't know how you can dance sober. It's like, do you really give a fuck? Do you think anyone on that dance floor is looking at you caring about you they're actually looking at you and comparing you to themselves like no one gives a shit about you other than literally your mum and dad and your immediate family if you're lucky nobody cares so start looking out for you and doing the right thing for you and surround yourself with people that support you doing positive things to move in positive ways you know like a saying I once heard is um, you lie with dogs, you get fleas. You know, like really be careful who you surround yourself with. Um, and if they're not lifting you up, it might be time to, to rethink your friendship group or, you know, it's, it's pretty hard if it's your family um, because, you know, unfortunately we don't choose our family, we're stuck with them. But I think it's also about having conversations and communication and opening up those lines and, and being honest. But but first you have to be honest with yourself. So sometimes you've got to go inside, work out what it is that you want. It's like at the moment, I've decided that I wanted to lose weight. I've lost 13 kilos. Like I'm super happy with myself. And my husband's also as well. He's exercising really well. And, but now he comes on walks with me, which is great. He doesn't drink really anymore because I don't drink. Uh, and I'm sure he did that at the beginning just to make it easier for me. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, we're in such a habit right now that uh, I think we went out the other Saturday and I was like, oh, babe, have a beer, have a beer. And he's like, no, no, no. And I'm like, have a beer. And I think he had one. But then he's like, yeah, I'm pretty much pissed now because he hadn't had one for like 12 months. <laughs> so it makes a cheap night out if you do decide to, to stop drinking and maybe have one every now and again. But um, I hope this helps someone out there. If you want to comment or share, I would I'd love you to be able to do that. And please check out uh, my website, badmum.com.au. It's going to, it's just in development at the moment. So we're going to be looking at doing some blogs and other fun stuff. Um, if you want to talk on my podcast or you think you have anything interesting to say about parenting and 
just in life in general. Like it's got actually nothing to do with parenting. It's just working out who you are and being a better person. Please feel free to contact me um, and I'd love to have a chat. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.